What is going on guys? My name is Nick or Olsen Auto and in today's video we are in the garage and as you can tell I just kicked the air compressor. We are in the garage and as you can tell it's a way way different camera setup. Uh, I'm using my Canon T6 with a wide angle lens um, and the reason I'm using this now is because it feels a lot more professional, it feels a lot higher quality and it'll allow me to edit on my desktop. Anyway, ignoring the new setup guys, we're going to go ahead and we're going to replace the fork seals on the CBR 600 F2. This bike is a 1994 Honda CBR 600 F2 that I picked up for 700 bucks. Now I picked up this bike and for the last couple weeks I've just been totally disassembling it and been working on it so that I can get it to be absolutely showroom perfect. I ordered a whole new fairing kit, tail lights, LED headlights, I ordered everything. This bike is going to be amazing. Now one thing other than cosmetics is obviously mechanical condition and its biggest flaw is the fork seals. It leaks a ton of oil and it actually got the rim and the tire soaked and with the tire soaked in oil I don't feel like sliding out in a corner. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace the fork seals in this bike. Now one of the big things is replacing these fork seals in this bike on my own in this garage on a budget. So what we have here is a rear motorcycle swing arm stand that I just picked up from Harbor Freight. It was $30 after the 20% coupon. So 30 bucks and the bike is held up very, very firm, which is awesome. And you may be thinking that we need to get the front end up, which is correct. So to get the front end up, we have uh, just a Craftsman floor jack right here with a piece of wood. And we're going to jack it up by the header. Now this could be questionable for some people, but from what I understand this is pretty much the best way to go about this. I don't think there's actually a better way to jack it up. So I use a piece of wood so it's not hard metal, gives it a bigger contact patch. And I set it up right about there because if it's any further forward, the bike will tip over to one side so you want to avoid that. Um, while the forks are off, I'm going to repaint this. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so the first step we're going to do in the whole process is we're going to get these lock nuts up top and we're going to break those free. You're not going to fully take them off, you're just going to snap those two free. And then we're doing that here because uh, this part is called the stanchion. While the stanchion is being held still, it makes it much, much easier than if it's in the vise. So we're going to break that free, going to break that free, and then we can go ahead and take off the clamp bolts, which there's two Allens up top. And then there are two what look like 14s right here and right here. And obviously my bike is fully disassembled, so I have a bit of an advantage. You might have to work around some fairings on your own, but right now this is what we're working with, so this is what we're doing. Alright, so just for reference, I would recommend taking the front tire off before you take off the pinch bolts holding the forks on, just because it is posing a little bit of a problem. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but just a heads up, take the front wheel off first. So, we are working with a 24 millimeter socket now once those two stanchion lock nuts on the top are broken free we're gonna move to the allen head pinch bolts on the upper triple tree and then we're gonna move to the two bolts on the bottom so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab an allen Alright guys, so the first step, and as you can tell, I already got my forks off. The first step should have been to loosen the axle nut right here. This sits here in the wheel. You should loosen that nut first, take the front wheel off, take the calipers off, which is the next step that I'm showing you. And then you're going to take the wheel off, and then you should take the forks off. I did it a little backwards, which made it a little bit more difficult, but uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to rebuild those forks. So there are two bolts right here holding on the brake caliper. There's one on the top, and then there's this one on the bottom, and it's like this on the other side as well.
gently hang down your caliper and you're just going to repeat the process on the same side. Ooh, look at the bobber looking good. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to finish, we're going to hold the bottom of the fork and you're going to loosen the pinch bolts a little bit more. These weren't even tied up top. Like that. All right. All right, so now we have both of our forks out. Now we're gonna go ahead and rebuild them. All right, guys, so this is the left side fork. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna clamp it this way. And now it's a six millimeter Allen. Right in the end, there's like a little drain plug. We're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna break it free. Moving the entire vise. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put this in our little bin, and then we're gonna use this thing like a massive super soaker. Alright, so make sure you guys have speedy dry or you're not retarded. Whatever you guys have to do to not spill fork oil everywhere. Um, I had to go with the first one because the second one's true. Um, so for getting all the oil out of the forks, there's this bolt on top that you guys pre-loosened when it was still stuck in the pinch bolts up here. Uh, you're going to take that out while you're loosening the oil and you're going to pull the spring out. Don't mix up the innards, obviously. And now we're going to move on to the next step, which is removing the old seals. Alright guys, so I got the this fork fully disassembled. Now I did that off camera, just so you guys know that I have some idea what I'm doing. I don't want to make sure I actually knew what I was doing first. So now, we're going to go ahead and disassemble this fork. And I apologize for the earlier mistakes in the video. Uh, I should have taken the time and made sure everything was right. So, the video's been all over the place. I'll make sure I go over everything at the end step by step so you don't mess anything up like I did. That's why I'm here to take the hit and you're not. What we're going to do with this work now, we're going to pull out the innards. Um, I'm going to label them. I'm going to put a little sharpie mark on there and a sharpie mark on there, like one in one, so I don't mix up those with that. So once I label that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to teach you how I got this apart and why this is so important, a few other things. Now, when you're taking out the insides of these forks, you want to make sure that you're careful with it, you don't drop anything. Alright, so as you guys can see, there's a little rubber dust seal right here. Now we're going to go at that with a flathead and we're going to try to pick it off. It could be a little bit annoying and you want to make sure you don't damage it too bad. Now we're going to take this piece off. Now in here, there's a little metal clip. You're just going to, you want to cover it with your hand so you don't accidentally have it spring up in your face. But there is an end. So you're just going to put the pick in, and you're sort of going to push it outward. As you can see, the clip comes right off. And slide it right over the edge. And now here comes the fun part. It's a stanchion like a slide hammer. As you can see, you can pull out. Now there is still some fluid, so that's going to suck, but what are you going to do? So I like to grab it right here so that my thumb is pressing against this and my middle finger against this. Sometimes, you know, just get a good grip on it. Whatever you're comfortable with. And what you're trying to do is you're going to use a stanchion to push these um, seals out, the ones we're replacing. Now, as you can see, it's getting much closer. And it'll pop all apart. Those are the seals we're replacing. All right, guys, so in here, you're gonna tip it upside down. And this is a seat. It sits right on the bottom of the spring. I'll show you guys that when we go to start reassembly. Now, something that your parents might not approve of, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I brought my, uh, 
my lower piece of my fork into my house. It's sitting on my bathroom counter right now. Um, I'm going at it with isopropyl alcohol in a rag. I'm cleaning it up, and it's kind of cold outside. It's a little too cold to paint. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing it inside. I'm letting this get warm. I'm also heating up the garage. And then I'm going to paint it in the garage, obviously block it with cardboard so there's no crazy overspray. Uh, but what I'm going to do to get it warm fast is a hairdryer. So I'm going to finish wiping this with alcohol. I'm going to wipe the other one. I'm just painting these. You don't have to do this. It's just uh, something I thought I'd mention. Alcohol and I'm going to hairdry it. So essentially what I did was I first scotch braided these uh, just to remove any rough bores or any rough burrs rather. Or anything where the paint might, I don't know what this groove is, uh, anything where the paint might be kind of messed up. I just scotch ready to get it as smooth as possible. And then I went ahead and I used rubbing alcohol, wiped down all of the dust. As you can see, it's on my hands. And then I used a hair dryer to warm them up. Now I have the two cans of spray paint sitting by a wood stove just so those are nice and warm too. And then we're going to go ahead, we're going to hang these up probably with like a bungee cord through here. And then we're going to zip tie them and uh, paint them. So... What I have here is just the little off run cover and the run switch itself. This is going to be cherry red and then this is going to be painted as well. So I decided uh, I watched a couple videos while my paint dried. Um, I'm going, I just applied another coat. I am going to replace these neck bearings. They feel just, I wish you guys could feel it because it's hard to describe but it's like, it's not smooth. You can feel it. It's terrible and I'm sure we'll see when we get it out. So there are two, sorry, yeah, there's two little nuts on top that I have to take off. Well, there's this one. And then these two spanners, we're going to take those off, and then this should fall to the ground, hopefully. Guys, I wish I could make this up. I went to pull out the top bearing, and it exploded in my hand. I, I wish I was faking this. The bottom bearing wasn't pressed in. And the top bearing just exploded in my hand. All of the bearing just fell apart. That's incredible. Well, there's your problem. So I have those two pieces done. I have the two fork tubes done. I'm going to reassemble the forks later tonight. I have the engine kill switch getting painted right now. I took off the brake reservoir cap because it was gross and oversprayed. And I also have the headlight bracket. Now what I'm prepping up over here is I have the rectifier. I'm just going to do the two bolts to take that off and then there's a ground. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to paint from the frame here back. I'm also going to take this off. So all of that's going to get repainted. As you can see, it's just disgusting. Uh, and then I'm going to repaint this part of the frame as well. All right, so I've just been in the process of masking and sanding and scotch braiding and making sure this whole frame is ready for paint. I'm going to do the whole thing uh, not the engine, I'm going to cover up the engine, and then I'm going to do the swing arm once the front end is done. I managed, uh, with the help of my dad, to punch out the race bearings from the neck. So tomorrow, I'm actually going to be reassembling the forks. i got to pick up some fork oil. So that's going to be in another video, actually. But uh, also, I messed up the start-stop switch. As you can see, it looks absolutely terrible. I messed it up pretty bad, so... Uh, Gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try to strip all the paint off of that and restart it because it came out absolutely horribly. Now I expected today to only be doing the forks. Um, what ended up happening is I think I now have some weird attachment to this bike where every time I see something that's not perfect, I end up having to fix it. Not good, because when you buy a 26 year old motorcycle, there are a lot of things that aren't going to be perfect, so I'm trying to make it as good as I can. Uh, I'm going to keep masking it off and then hopefully get the frame painted tonight, and then that'll be the end of the video. Alright guys, it's all ragged off, masked off, as well as I care to get it, so let's see what this looks like.
All right, guys, the first coat is on. I went kind of light with it. Super glossy looking. Hopefully, this all comes out good. As you can see, I got to get in here and whatnot, but uh, I think it came out pretty, pretty well. All right, guys, it is about 9:30 at night, and as you can see, the frame is coming out amazing. You guys can see it's like nice and glossy. It's coming out mirror finish. Now I am thinking about keeping it like this and buying some clear coat tomorrow to really, really jazz it up. Uh, but it came out great. I'm not going to apply a full coat. This is only after two coats. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go in. I'm going to touch up areas like this and right up in here. But like I said, guys, this is a $5 can of paint, some old rags and masking tape. And we have... A, a pearl like finish it's amazing I can see myself in the frame that is so cool so we're gonna do one more coat of paint getting little areas I didn't get up there just a light coat and then uh, hopefully clear coat it tomorrow alright guys we applied the final little touch up bits I think this is all set for tonight I'm gonna go ahead and give snapchat an update I think this looks incredible we got all these little bits painted we got the forks disassembled and painted I still have to throw new seals on. I'm going to pick up some fluid tomorrow, fully reassemble the forks, guys. We are making insane progress on this build. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be putting the forks back on. I'm going to be putting the whole front end of the bike back together. And then we're going to tear into the rear end, hopefully throw on a new chain. We're going to paint up both wheels. We're going to do gloss black, same as the frame. Going to have to pick up another can of that. But I'm going to end that video here. So I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Ignore the mask, it's really painty in here. Uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this CBR restoration, guys, I am in love with how this build is going. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you like the new camera and you like the new camera quality, again, comment down below. Let me know if you want me to change something or what needs to be done. If you guys have any recommendations for videos or anything you want to see me do, I'm kind of treating this as a tutorial for fork seals, but not really. This is just my CBR restoration. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. If you liked it, hit that like button, comment down below, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.